It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? Bitch boy, Millsy, back with the hometown commander, and we are back for week two of Wilds of Eldraine content. Uh, this video was supposed to go at the end of last week, so we're going to start the week off with it. We're talking about Balloon Grand Squalls and uh, Tamer Adventures. Millsy Brews is, of course, a show where I brew my version 1.0 of the deck list of the commander in front of us on my quest out brew your favorite magic channel as always decklist is in the description if you're interested please take it make it your own and if you want to stick around and hear what i have to say please do so we're going back to eldraine and i think one of the big things that we saw the first time we went to eldraine uh was the introduction of adventures adventures are a spell that exists on another permanent and uh, if you want to choose to cast that adventure spell, you can do so. After you finish resolving that spell, the creature goes into exile, and then you can cast the creature side from exile. Um, you have to choose one or the other when casting it, and uh, if on casting the adventure, the spell is countered, it gets put into the graveyard. For some reason, I had thought that you, that you had to go on an adventure from your hand. I'm not entirely sure why I thought that, because there's no proof of that anywhere. <laughs> um, so we can actually play adventure spells from our graveyard, which is kind of interesting as well. We're not playing into a ton of that here, but it is possible. Blue to Grand Squall is our second technical adventure commander. I think we had Gorian from... Uh, from one of our Commander, Le Commander Legends said that was a, in, in band. Um, I think I like Teamer a little bit more. But uh, the goal of the deck is to take advantage of our adventures for having extra value. Each of a, m most of our creatures have an adventure spell, so they're kind of two and ones. Hopefully, we can assemble enough value two and one in our creatures. We have a little bit of stuff that cares about us, then casting those creatures from exile and getting value. Uh, on that, but our commander is Balloon Grand Squall, a uh, green, red, uh, blue for a 4-4 four, four giant noble with trample, and it says permanent spells you cast have an adventure cost one less to cast, so everything costs one less on the adventure. And then from the command zone, we can pay five mana for Seek Thrills, mill seven cards, and put all cards that have an adventure from among the milled cards into your hand. So I think there's two ways you can look at Balloon up. If we want to jump her down really quick, we can then take advantage of some of the adventure spells we have in our hand. Or if we want to wait, just commit the five mana mill, get the cards back, hopefully, and then attack the board uh, that way. I think there's a lot of different ways to do it, uh, but again, the hope is to take our deck, take all these creatures and, and permanents that have adventure, and hopefully we can amass uh, some value along the way in getting kind of two for one in all of our cards. Try to go fairly basic with the mana base. Um, I do still really like the Innistrad lands, uh, the Commander lands, even though we're in green. I am playing Tangled uh, Islet and the Wooded Ridge line because we are playing uh, Farseek and uh, Nature's Lore, so we want to have a couple uh, dual type lands to go get. Because uh, we're not playing the Catchy Tram, we're not playing any of the Shocks, we're not playing any of the Fetches, so I want to make sure we still have fetchable targets for Nature's Lore and uh, Farseek. Obviously, Farseek can go get any of our basic lands, but I want to make sure we have non-basic targets uh, for Farseek so we can get, and, and Nature's Lore, uh, so we can go get uh, dual lands off of them. We're trying out the two new Restless lands. I think they're kind of interesting just because we may end up having extra mana and they become spells, or sorry, they become creatures, which I think is pretty cool. Overall, and then we, I believe we have a new land in Edgewall Inn. Comes in tap. When it comes in, choose a color. We add a man of that color. Or three, to tap, sacrifice it, return to our card that has an adventure from our graveyard to our hands. We could potentially recycle something that either got countered or something we already used already. Which I think is, is beneficial. Edgewall Inn is not a, a, um, a crazy land. It's not it's nothing new. But, but I like, again, just a minimal amount of support for the adventures that we're already trying to do. Getting into the enchantments, I think we have two sets of uh, cards here. Cards that we're specifically trying to kind of fit into our adventure plan, and then overall just good teamer cards. Uh, we'll start with the ones that fit into our adventure plan. Passionate Archaeologist, a background from uh, Boulder's Gate. Commander creatures you own have, whenever you cast a spell from exile, this deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. So, most of our creatures... The mana value of the creature is a lot more than the adventure, so 
use the Avenger for cheap, and hopefully we can deal some damage with Passion Archaeologist as we cast it. The Lost in the Dam, this is from the 40k decks. This is whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control from anywhere other than your hand, or you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, create a 3 3 token. So, there, when we're casting our those adventure, those creatures back out of the adventure, um, we're going to get 3 3s for that. And then Warstorm Surge, uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, it deals damage to its power to any target. A lot of these adventure cards have really good, interesting spells on the adventure, and then a, and then a very expensive big creature. And so I think Warstorm Surge is going to help us with dealing out some damage as we're putting down maybe creatures that are overcosted a little bit because they have that access to that spell on them as well. Um, Garrix Uprising, again, lots of creatures, um, and most of them are four or greater, so we get to potentially draw cards there off of the Uprising, but it gives all of our creatures trample. Rhythm of the Wild is going to give those creatures either haste or a pulse and pulse encounter, and they can't be countered. This won't stop the adventure from being countered. This will stop the creature spell from being countered, which I think is important considering some of them we have to pay extra mana because the cards are being slightly over with the fact that they have that adventure spell on there. Teamer Ascendancy, all creatures we control have haste, and again, drawing in a power four or greater. Utopia Sprawl for the ranch, uh, the, the ranch, the ramp, uh, Wild Growth for the ramp, and then Virtue of Note, we're playing two of the three Virtues in the set that we can play. Virtue of Knowledge, it's instant adventure, says copy target activated or triggered ability you control, we can choose any targets for the copy. And then the second side, and the main side, uh, if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent, you can totally trigger that ability triggers in such a time. Again, hope here is Garrick's Uprising, um... Uh, Garrick's Uprising, Teamer, Ascendancy, Warstorm Surge, hopefully we can double these potentially if need be. And then Virtue of Strength, Green Sorcery, Return to our Creature Land card from our Graveyard to our Hand, so that's pretty good. Get something back, and then if you tap a basic land for mana, it produces three times as that much mana instead. So just a way to uh, kind of get extra mana. We have a 11 basics, so we should have enough, but if we notice we don't have enough, we could always take out a few lands and put in more basics to take advantage of it. Getting up into our artifacts, uh, we have a lot of mana artifacts, Arcane Signet, uh, Chromatic Lantern to help us with our colors, Commander Sphere, Decanter for the extra hand size, uh, Midnight Clock, a artifact I will put in absolutely any blue deck, helps you with um, recycling your hand in your graveyard and drawing a fresh seven and getting things back into your deck if you start to run low, Soul Ring, and then Great Hand, which technically taps for mana, uh, but the nice part about Great Hand is it also is going to work with virtual knowledge and then every time a creature non-token creature comes in it gets pulse from pulse when we draw a card so this is good to actually help us draw more cards too uh, the only two artifacts that aren't mana rocks are lucky clover which says whenever we cast an adventure instant or sorcery we copy it and choose new targets well that's certainly darn good that just gives us more value for our mana and then two-handed axe the adventure says target creature we control it's double strike until in a turn and its regular ability says whenever a equipped creature attacks, double its power until end of turn. So, again, here's an artifact that has an adventure on it um, that we can use. Uh, Wilds of Eldraine was the first set to ever have enchantments that have adventures on them, whereas uh, I believe Baldur's Gate was the first set to have our equipment that had adventures on them. I, I could be wrong on that, but that's my understanding. Uh, you can correct me <laughs> in the comments on that. Getting up into the instance, we have just a little bit of removal. Beast within can hit anything. Chaos Warp can hit anything, so these can hit no matter what, lands, permanents, um, and then a reality shift for a uh, creature. We have Growth Spiral to do a little bit of ramp. Quandrix Command works in a couple of different ways. We can um, we can return to our creature of Planeswalkers with Toner's Hand. I like this ability because we can bounce a creature we've already played back to our hand and try to use its adventure again. We can counter a target artifact or enchantment spell, put two counters on a creature, or shuffle three cards from their anyone's graveyard into their library. So, um, I like that. I think it's good utility. Again, sometimes we want to bounce something back to our hand and use its ability. Other times, we may just want to have some counter play. I know, Civic Charm. Um, this is my attempt to try to play a... Try to play a... 
heroic intervention effect without getting too expensive. So the top one says, but it's a, you'll see as we go down, it also helps us out with the same thing as Quandrix Command. Top ability, uh, target creature gets plus three, plus three until the turn. Permanence we control, gain hexproof until the turn, and then return target creature to its owner's hand. So again, hopefully we can either stop someone from targeting our things. It doesn't give indestructible like heroic intervention would, but I think the bottom ability of return something to the hand gives it a little bit of flexibility. Getting up into our sorceries, um, they kind of split between two different styles, ramp and then non-ramp. Uh, for our ramp, cultivate, escape to the wilds, which allows us to exile the top five of our library. When we can play cards, exile this way until the end of your next turn, we can play an additional land. Uh, explore, draw a card, play an additional land, far seek, Katama's Reach, Nature's Lore, Rampant Growth. Very classic um, ramp suite, other than escape to the wilds, and we'll happily use it here. Expressive iteration, let's just look at the top top three of a library, put one into our hand, put one in the bottom, and then exile one, and we can play the exile card this turn. Just always try to play iteration before you play your land for turn, just so that potentially you can get a land this way if need be. Blessing sack for some mass removal. And then Candle Keep Inspiration seems interesting. It says, until end of turn, creatures you control we have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards you own in exile and in your graveyard that are instant cards, sorcery cards, and or have an adventure, which could potentially be a lot. Maybe that finds a way for us to make all of our creatures bigger and maybe hit uh, for a bunch of damage. But all right, uh, the rest of our deck is creatures, and it's importantly like creatures because most of the creatures in our deck um, have an adventure. We'll talk about the creatures that don't have an adventure first, and then we'll knock through all of the creatures that do. The first up is Chancellor of Tales, four mana, two, three fairy that says whenever we cast an adventure spell, we can copy it. If we do, we choose new targets for the copy. So that's helpful. Again, another copy kind of this, of this lucky clover effect where we used to double off of the mana. We're spending edge wall innkeeper. Whenever we cast, um, a spell that has, that has an adventure, we draw a card. Um, the interesting cool part here is that uh, we can, I believe, draw when we play the adventure and then draw when we play the regular creature, which could help us a ton as far as turning through our deck. Fallenhorn, I feel like, is a perfect thing for this deck. It says whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land and there's a battle under your control from exile, we make a wolf token. We can pay one tab, discard a card, exile the top card of our library, and we can play it this turn. Faldhorn just seems great because we're already going to be playing these creatures from exile after they go on their adventures. So this is just going to give us extra resources in the back end for what we're already trying to do. Uh, Elysian Carolita just for some... Carry you did just for some uh, extra uh, tapping for mana. The cool part about this is it adds a mana of any color. And if we have a creature power four or greater, it adds two mana of any color. So this helps us out in kind of our, our ramp game. Uh, Lozen, um, Dragon's Legacy from Baldur's Gate. Whenever we cast an adventure spell or a dragon spell, it deals damage to that spell's mana value to any target that is in the commander. We do have a couple dragons in the deck uh, from Baldur's Gate that that, uh, that will help us out here. Or this should just trigger on all of our adventure spells, which I think is pretty positive. Uh, Sentinel of Lost Lore, whenever it enters the battlefield, choose one, return to our creature card you own in exile that has an adventure to your hands. We can get that spell back to use the adventure again. Put to our card you don't own in exile that has an adventure on the bottom of its owner's library so it can hopefully stop an opponent from, uh, from adventuring or exile target player's graveyard. So I think it's interesting. I, I like it as a way to get a spell we already used the adventure in back and use it again. And then Wild Magic Sorcerer seems so good. Whenever we cast our first spell from Exile, it has Cascade. So a lot of these creatures are pretty big uh, when we when we go to actually cast them. So hopefully we can then cascade into other spells or enchantments. I just think it could be kind of interesting to see what we cascade into off of our really uh, big creatures. Um, obviously the creatures in this deck are going to be a mix of the adventure creatures from Wilds of Eldraine and from Throne of Eldraine. So it's cool that we get to finally get to see all of them together. And then a, a few from Baldur's Gate, obviously, as well, because Baldur's Gate had some adventures. First up, Beanstalk Giant. Its adventure lets you get a basic land, put on the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle. And its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands we control. Beanstalk's great because it's kind of another copy of that, like, rampant growth style effect. Uh, it's just one more mana, but would cost one less with Balloon Out. So it would be basically a rampant growth uh, with Balloon Out, which I really like. Beanstalk Worm. One in the green to play an additional land this turn, and it just comes down as a 5 4 three. reach. Again, here you go. Here's another explore type effect, except we don't draw a card. But again, another potential for some more ramp. Uh, Bramble Familiar from Wilds of Eldraine. 
the adventure lets us mill seven and put a creature enchantment or land from among them back to onto the battlefield and we can tap for a green mana or one the green to bring it back to its owner's hand. I like this because that minimum is just a, a, a green mana dork if we need it, or if we want to mill seven and do those shenanigans, we can. Brazen Bower, probably the, uh, one of the best adventure uh, creatures from the original time uh, on Eldraine. Uh, in, in standard, um, in standard the, uh, the Red Giant, uh, sorry, yeah, the Red Giant got a, got a lot of play as well, but I think Brazen Bower was the one that had the most impact. One in the blue to return target non-land permanent opponent controls to their hand. And then it has flash and flying and and can only block creatures with flying. But I don't think we care. I think this is a creature that we want to attack, hopefully in the air. Uh, Elusive Otter from the new set. Um, X in the green on the adventure, distribute X plus and plus encounters among any number of target creatures you control. And then it has prowess and creatures with less power than it can't block it. So hopefully we can play a couple adventure spells in our turn and then Elusive Otter hopefully can get in for some damage. Um, Ember Shield Bla uh, Breaker. We destroy target artifact on the adventure, and then it's just a two-one. So good, uh, good there. A little mini Vandal Blast uh, without the option to overload it on the well, on the adventure half, and then just a little two-one. Emerald Dragon, the first of our Baldur's Gate dragons, uh, two and a green to counter target activated or triggered ability from a non-creature source, and then it just comes down as a flying trampler for six. Frolicking familiar from the new set. Deals one damage to any target on the adventure, and then flying whenever we cast into a sorcery gets plus and plus for another turn. So basically, just has a that a prowess style effect, um, except instead of non creature, just instant or sorcery. So kind of a magecraft ability in that sense. But I like it again. Here's another creature with prowess that the more adventures we play, the bigger it's going to get. Hearth Elemental is kind of interesting. Its adventure says we discard our hand and then draw two cards. The best, of course, time to play that would be when we have no other cards in our hands. We get to just profit. And this is a cost X list to cast, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard that are instant sorceries or have an adventure. So hopefully, we can, if we get some cards, like our ramp spells that we play, or worst case scenario, we lose a couple adventure creatures, then hopefully Hearth Elemental becomes cheaper to play. Horned Lockwell. This card looks so cool. This is from Wilds of Eldraine. One in a blue to put the, the owner of target attacking creature you don't control puts it on the top or bottom of the library. So I like this. This is kind of like that Brazen Bower effect, but again, you get to bounce an attacking creature back. Flash Ward 2 and Ares Battlefield tapped unless it's your turn. So we obviously want to potentially um, flash it in on our turn. Uh, so it comes in it comes in untapped but worst case scenario we could flash this in our opponent's turn and have it untapped for our turn and have it ready to go uh, hypnotic sprite uh, the adventure lets us counter target spell with cmc three or less or mana value three or less and then it comes down as a flyer Lovestruck beast one of the other cards from eldraine that saw great play the adventure gives us a one one human and it says Lovestruck beast can attack unless you control a one one creature and we do uh, we should hopefully have a couple of them i do believe we have a couple small creatures as well merchant of the vile uh, the adventure says uh, you may discard a card if you do draw a card, and then two in a red, discard a card to draw a card. So a uh, little bit of looting if need be. Picnic Ruiner. The green lets you distribute three plus and plus encounters among any number of target creatures or control. And then whatever it attacks, whatever it would creature probably with power four or greater, it gets double strike on the turn. So hopefully we can get some good damage in with Picnic Bruner. Uh, Queen of Ice, the adventure taps down a creature and it doesn't untap during its um, control its next untap step. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature. It doesn't untap during its uh, control's next untap step. So I like Queen of Ice. It's not a bad blocker. And it can also tap things down. Question Druid, one of the other cool new cards from Wilds of Eldraine. Uh, the adventure is a, a cool play from Exile Effect. Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next until your next end step, uh, which could potentially be the same turn. So you got to be careful, or just use this in someone else's turn. Uh, you can play those cards, and then whenever you cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red, you put a plus and plus one counter on. So hopefully we can play a bunch of other cards and pump this Druid up. Rose Thorn Acolyte, um, the green lets us add a man of any color to our mana pool so we can fill to that green. And then it just taps for a man of any color. So a nice little uh, mana dork there. Sapphire Dragon, uh, two and a blue to counter target on creature spell. And then it has flying whenever it attacks or blocks, we scry two. So that's kind of cool. And again, it's a dragon. Scalding Viper, one and a blue for a uh, sorcery adventure. Return target non land permanent to his hand. So it's kind of brazen bar, but at sorcery speed. And this says whenever an opponent casts a spell, the mana value three or less, it deals one damage to that player. So potentially a little bit of damage for somebody if they're playing lots of cheap spells. 
Storm Compelled Vanguard, the adventure lets this destroy artifact or enchantment at sorcery speed, and then it can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. And it's a big six seven. Tin Kali Hunter from the uh, Faldhorn deck. It's adventure says exile target creature card from your graveyard until the end of your next turn. You can cast that card. And it says trample once per turn. You can pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a creature spell you cast from exile. This is really good for all of our adventure creatures that we're casting back out of exile, uh, so that we can cast them for zero once per turn. Uh, young blue dragon, scry one then draw a card on the adventure, and it's just a three three with flying. And then young red dragon, cat uh, create a treasure on the adventure, and it can't block, but it's a three two with flying on the creature side again the adventure creatures there's only so many we're taking a look at um what we have access to and trying to build a deck hopefully we potentially see some more in the future whether we go back to eldraine again whether we see some more get released elsewhere um i think there's more support we could add to the deck of course try to take more advantage of casting things from exile um we could do a bunch of other things but i wanted to do is just make some sort of basis some sort of starting off point for us with adventures so we can take it and tinker with it. but let me know what do you think of a balloon adventures what would you add what would you change uh, about the deck i'm not in love with it i think it's interesting it, it at least lets me play some of the teamer cards that i really love um but i don't think it's my my deck just yet maybe we need a few more good creatures maybe a few more support cards for it but i think it, it's got a good solid amount there and even this deck isn't terribly expensive to start out with if this is what you wanted uh to do but let me know what you guys think down in the comments otherwise i will catch you guys next time